Hello and welcome to part five of lesson five. This session is about the load management. I'd like to highlight that the load could be used in the inbound and the outbound flow. In this session, we're gonna review the load management configurations with some focus on the outbound flow where the inbound operations will be covered in the warehouse management process course. The load planning is one of the transportation functions that is performed by the transportation coordinators to consolidate the customer shipments efficiency by avoiding half full loads, considering the load weight and volume and or the equipment restrictions that are used in the load. Let's first define the load. So the load is a group of shipments that are grouped together and typically going out on a single truck. So we can consider the load as the object that will be used to transport the delivery. This could be a shipping container, single truck, rail car, or any other mode of delivery. The load could be created in different ways, like manually, automatically with the order entry, or when the wave is processed. The load life cycle starts with a status open, and it could be posted in case of the release to warehouse process is performed, where the shipment and the load are created, but didn't assign to a wave. When the load is part of a wave, the status turns into waived when the wave is processed and accordingly, the picking work will be created. While processing the picking work, the load status will be in process and when the picking work is closed, then the load status will be loaded. And finally, when the outbound shipment is confirmed, the status will be shipped. The load could be created in different ways according to the warehouse and logistics process. So the load could be created automatically while processing the wave or with the order entry or manually from the load planning workbench form. And this is a task that idly performed by the transportation coordinator. When you create a load, you can assign it to a load template. The load template contains information about the equipment that is used in the load under physical dimensions. So you can plan the load and the required equipments considering the maximum dimensions of the equipment and the load template. You can also define item load mapping between the item groups and the load templates. So you can assign a load template automatically to items that are linked to a specific item group. So for example, if the load is frozen goods, then a load template that has a refrigerated truck will be used. Now let's see how to manage and define the load templates. The load templates found in warehouse management module, setup, load, then load templates. You can define several load templates that link it to the equipments that are used to carry out the goods to the customers, like the trucks. In order to define a new load template, click new and then give it load template ID. And after that, you can link it to a specific equipment. Hidden the equipment, you can define the equipment ID and name, and you can specify the equipment dimensions. Then, here in the load template, you can specify the load template dimensions and the maximum allowed volumes. It's not necessary that the specified load template dimensions will be fully utilized. Usually, you might have some space for the item handling. That's why you should define the maximum allowed values. So here, you can define the load template dimensions and then you can define the maximum allowed values. So you can define maximum allowed load volume weight and the maximum number of freight pieces and now let's move to the item load mapping and see how to link the item group to a specific load template id so the item load mapping found in warehouse management module setup load then item load mapping now let's link the item group of finished products for example to the load template id box truck 20 feet so this will ensure that while creating a load that contains finished product items, the load template ID box truck 20 feet will be automatically assigned to this load. Now let's see how to create the load and then how to release it to the warehouse. The load could be created automatically when the wave is processed. The wave could be processed manually from the waveform or it could be automatically according to the wave template configuration. In this demo, I just created the sales order, then I'll release it to the warehouse. After that, here in the sales order line details in the load tab, you can review the created load. Let's navigate to this load. 
here in the load, you can see the load template ID is automatically assigned according to the load item mapping, and the current status of this load is waived. You can review here in the load lines that the load line is related to the shipment and the sales order that we just released to the warehouse. The wave could be automatically created with the order entry. This option is managed by the warehouse management parameter as a company-wide policy, and this option could be enabled specifically for a specific order type, like with the sales, purchase, or transfer order entry. Now let's navigate to the warehouse management parameters, loads tab. Then I'm gonna enable this option, automatically create a sales order entry. Then I'll navigate to the sales order form and I'm gonna create the sales order line. Once you saved the sales order line, then here in the loads tab, you can see a new load is automatically created. Be aware that when the sales order line on a load, then you will not be able to release the sales order to the warehouse from the sales order form. So if I click now release to warehouse, then this error message is thrown stating that one of the lines is already on a load, enabled to release it to warehouse. And now the question is, how to release this load to the warehouse? We should navigate first to the load form. And here in the load form, be aware that, that the shipment is not yet created. In order to release this load to the warehouse, then we should navigate to the load planning workbench form. And then here in the load planning workbench form, select the load, release, then release to warehouse. Click OK. So right now, you will see that a shipment has been created and the shipment added to the wave and then the wave will be posted and processed according to the wave template configuration. So here we can see the work has been generated. While releasing the load to the warehouse, the system will perform the logic of the load posting methods that are used to release the load to the warehouse and to create the shipments. The load posting methods found in warehouse management module setup then load posting methods. This is one time setup. So when you just create the legal entity, you should click generate methods in order to generate the load posting methods. Here we have the steps in sequence, validate load, validate load lines, validate items, reserve the order, and finally create the shipments. And when it comes to the step number four, reserve order, this is works in conjunction with uh, an option in the warehouse form called reserve inventory at load posting. So when this option is enabled, then while releasing the load to the warehouse, the system will automatically reserve the sales order lines. The load could be created manually using the load planning workbench form where you can review the open order lines. Then you can add the lines into a new load or an existing load. This is typically a task for the transportation coordinator who is aware of the available trucks and the daily shipments and the transportation routes. The load planning workbench form is used in other transportation functions like applying the transportation rate, but in this session, we're going to focus on the load creation and how to release it to the warehouse. It's worth mentioning that in app 10.0.24, Two new load planning workbench forms are introduced with significant performance improvement compared to the current load planning workbench form. The old form combined the sales, transfer, and purchase order lines into one form, but right now there is a form for the inbound operations that have the purchase order lines and another one for the outbound operations for the sales and transfer order lines. The new forms are managed by a feature called new load planning workbench page, so you have to enable it first. Now let's review how to create the load manually using the load planning workbench form. I just enabled the new feature, new load planning workbench page, then I'll navigate to the outbound load planning workbench form that's found in warehouse management module, loads, then outbound load planning workbench. In this form, you will find here the sales order lines and transfer order lines. Then in the lower section, you can review the generated loads. Then you can apply some filter to found the applicable order lines by using the site, warehouse, ship date, and receipt date. 
you can also define predefined rules with a specific criteria to filter out the order lines by using the supply and demand filter or to filter out the loads by using the load filter. I just created supply and demand filters that are used to filter out the sales order lines according to the filter criteria that's specified in each filter. So here, for example, I created a filter that will found the sales order lines that will be delivered today by shipping carrier FedEx. When you select this filter, then the order lines will be filtered out. Here in the Filters tab, you can set this filter as default. So next time when you open this form, it will be automatically assigned this filter criteria. In order to manage an existing filter or define new filter criteria, then click here Filters and navigate to the Load Planning Filters form. Now let's define a new filter for the open loads. So I'll click New, then I'll give it a name, Open Loads. And then here in the load planning filter type, I'll select load. You can select load or sales order or transfer order or shipment. So I'll select here load. And then in the edit query, I'll select here in the field status. And then I'll specify the criteria open load. And then I'll click OK. Now let's go back to the outbound load planning workbench form and see how to add the order lines into loads. So here you can select a specific order lines and then supply and demand. You can add this order line into a new load or an existing load. You can also add the entire order lines into new load or an existing load. So I'll click entire order to new load. Then you should select here the load template ID and then in the lower section, you can review the load details. So here you can review the weight of the order lines and the capacity of the load template. And this is the same for the volume. I'll click OK. And then a new load will be created for this order line. So right now you can also use the load filter that we just created. I'll use this one open load that automatically filter also on the load type and then This is the load that we just created that has three load lines. Click here, release, and then release to warehouse, and then click OK. After that, this load will be released to the warehouse. So here we can see the load has been posted, the shipment has been created, and then the shipment assigned to a wave. Then this wave has been processed. Then the picking work has been generated. One of the significant features that is used to automatically create the loads is the wave load building feature. We will not deep dive into this feature as I'll release a separate video on how to configure it. But basically, the load building feature allows the users to create loads automatically based on user defined criteria. So for example, you can create a template that consolidates the loads that are going to the same city or district together and so on. This feature is useful for the business that want to use the concept of loads to track and plan the shipments in a truck, but they don't want to manually create those loads every day. Now let's recap what we discussed in the session. So first we discussed the load and the load life cycle, then how to define and configure the load templates, and then how to create the loads in different ways, like manually using the load planning workbench form and automatically with the order entry and while processing the wave. Then we had a quick overview about the wave load building feature. Thank you for watching and your time. Stay tuned for the next lesson. Feel free to reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.